Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. <laughs> it's like I can't say magic without like doing the hands. Like, I don't know, maybe it's magic to do. I don't know. That's for my theater, my theater nerds out there. But I'm excited for you to watch this interview because it's it, get used to laughing, get the laughing going now because there's a whole lot of that happening in this interview I do today with Wendy Elaine Wright. She's a talent manager. She's an author of seven industry books, the creator of the uber popular Facebook group, Talent Managers for Actors. And she's a founder of Hollywood Winner Circle Academy, which is the number one online business school for actors in the world. So, you know, birds of a feather flock together, like attracts like. So me and Wendy, we just attracted each other and it was so yummy getting to talk to her. My hair is different in the video, so don't be thrown off. If you know me by now, the hair always changes, okay? <laughs> but um, Wendy is a wealth of knowledge and it was so nice to get to just talk to her at this level and, and, to, and to think about you, the artist um, that we care for so much. So enjoy this video, um, enjoy this interview and share it with a friend, okay? Don't be stingy. And I'll see you at the next one. Bye. Oh my goodness, we've already been going on and on. I was like, Wendy, we gotta hit the record button. Wendy got cute, I got cute. We put on makeup for y'all. Shout out to the If you're listening on the podcast only, you're gonna wanna come to the YouTube page because we're cute and you should just see us. To <laughs> really feel us. I am here with the Wendy Lane Wright. Um, you already heard me say her her bio and all that stuff in the intro, but we're gonna dive right into it. Wendy, first of all, Thank you for saying yes. Yeah, it's an Thank honor. you for saying yes. Um, you have been such a huge influential part of the entertainment industry. Even before I was a coach, I would see you on YouTube and I would see you on Facebook. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. Someone is helping new actors actually like figure this out because I didn't I didn't know about you the first time I was in LA which I talk about a lot in my book so we'll get into that but I'm I'm so grateful that we're connected I don't even know how we really connected I think we just started seeing each other well, we can talk about you down that. because when I teach actors how to get in this business I also want them to learn how to book jobs because this is not just like let's just audition for fun. Let's, right. Like, your job is to try to get is to work. And yeah. I know that you are the if not the top booking coach. I always recommend Amy Linden and you. Yeah. End of discussion. Period. And I always tell actors train for six months with Christine. Train for six months with Amy. Then you're done. You've got it. You've got a technique, yeah. solid techniques that you can pull from, and you should be able to book the rest of your life. I love that. Thank you for that. Look, Wendy, she just look just like me. You like you do your due diligence because you not you know your community trusts you, mm -hmm. and you're not going to suggest anyone or anything that you don't you can't stand behind. Not and that's, what, that's what I love about Hollywood Winter Circle. If you, you, I will have all the links in the show notes for Wendy. First of all, Tell Wendy, me. yes, ma'am. I want to know about you. Cause I don't, I hear you giving everybody advice, but we don't always get to hear your story. I want to know how you even got in the entertainment industry. Where are you from? Where are you from? I, I never like to talk about myself too much. I'm, I'm, low, I'm the kind of person when, when I go to a party and I know that I'm gonna have to talk about myself, I literally hide in another room. Oh, no. I will do it though. I will do it for you. But we, I usually hide in another room until whatever the main event is that starts happening. And then I come out of the corner. Okay. Because okay. I'm all, I'm actually kind of uh, of introvert in in a way, you know. Even okay. though what I do is very extroverted, I I'm an interviewer. I, I introvert. I come late. I leave early and get the frick out and go home. But I, you know, I've always loved the entertainment business. I started as a singer, mm -hmm. and I've told this story before. But I had massive stage fright. I had horrific stage fright, paralyzing stage fright. And mm -hmm. I, but I dreamed of being a singer and I wanted to sing more than anything on earth. And so I was like, God, I got to get over this fear or I'll never live my dreams. I'll never be who I'm meant to be. So I did everything I could. I went to therapy. I took the forum. I did insight seminars, women's sex and power, the communication seminar with uh, Warner Earhart until I was able to have a courage and the strength to take a voice class. <laughs> That's what it took just to take a voice class yes. to let somebody else hear me sing and then go, hmm, I don't know if I like that or not. Or yes, okay. just the thought of being judged was more than I could stand, more than I could stomach. It made me sick to yeah. myself. But 
my desire to sing overrides everything that was coming up in the way. And that's really what I'm focused on is trying to help people get rid of whatever's in their way so they can become who they're meant to be. I've yeah. done it. So, I mean, and I know how hard it is, yeah. but I know if you don't battle your own demons, you'll never develop into who you are yeah. and who you're meant to be. So I spent years getting out of my own way. And then I met a record producer and then he flew me to Amsterdam and I sang on an album Okay. And I was just going there to sing on one song and they loved my voice so much that they asked me to join the group, sign a record deal and sing on the whole album, which I did. Wow. Come on, come through. <laughs> that throat chakra got released. <sighs> yes, it did. And my intention was never that there was another option. Mm. Like I never had a backup plan. There was never an option that I would not be a singer. It was mm. always I'm going to be a singer and I'm going to do whatever it takes to do that. So that's what I did. And I, I, you know, I, I, I loved every single minute of being a singer and performing on big stages. And Oh, I sang with Micah McDonald girl. That's my hero. His publisher and my publisher were the same publisher, Peter Bodegraven at BMG. I love it. And he called me one day and he said, Michael is performing at the Rotterdam Jazz Festival and he needs someone to sing On My Own with him. I was like, On My Own. I, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, the, just being able to say yes mm. is critical in order to have a successful life. Saying yes. Gotta say yes. Yes to everything. Your year of yes, your life of yes. Yes. So one yes leads to another yes. Now you're in the industry. I think I saw you post yep. in your Facebook group. You had a picture of you on stage. Um, and it was so nice to see like, oh, look, all the sides to people. I just love it. Then you end up becoming a manager at some point. Mm, I became a music agent first. A music agent. Okay. Yeah, because that was my background, you know, and I was a producer right. in the music business and I, I wrote songs for people. I had, I wrote some hit songs for some other people. And then I, I um, was married to a record producer. He produces like all kinds of music for BET and all these other shows, a lot of shows. And um, he was Dutch. So he wanted to live in America. That was his dream. So I said, let's live in America. We, we live dreams in this world. Yes, <laughs> yeah. don't talk about them. We live them. So we packed up everything, all the studios and the house and moved to uh, Los Angeles and been here ever since. And, you know, I, I think those, those years of being in the music business, I understand how it works. I understand how actor, artists, let me start with singers. Mm -hmm. I understand how they start out, how they get developed, how they create their, 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 their demo reels, how they, how they get their music out there, how they sign with record labels. So I first started out as a music agent. Okay. And then I decided I didn't want to work in the music business anymore. I just, I changed my mind. <laughs> well, and I, do that. Yeah. I literally quit the entertainment business completely. And I said, you know, I, I and I'll tell you a weird thing that happened, Christine. I got tired of hearing myself sing. Wow. When I was growing up singing, I would listen to music, Whitney Houston, or like, I would listen to like, oh, you know, Anita Baker or any a thousand songs. And I would sing and sing and sing and sing. And the sound of my voice was the gl most glorious sound I had ever heard. And the feeling that I had singing was the greatest experience of my life. I think it saved me through the years of being bullied as a child. I think it saved me in, in every way. And one day after 20 years, I just didn't want to hear myself sing anymore. Wow. I just didn't want to hear it. And I also was tired of talking about myself <laughs> and being the focus of the attention. So yeah. I quit and I went to work at an interior design firm. Total opposite. You're like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to make things beautiful from behind the scenes. That's it. Hotel design, restaurant design. I'm into that. I love art. Let's mm -hmm. create our, our beautiful spaces. And I married the guy who owned that company. And his daughter was the most beautiful little thing I'd ever seen. She was three. They would get, they'd gotten divorced and she was three. And I thought, Oh my God, she's stunning. And her mother and father said, can you get her into the entertainment industry? And I was like, yes, I can. And so I did. And I got her an agent and then it ended up that I became um, acting manager. Okay. 
because I started working with this three-year-old. I had to get her an agent. Then I had to get her to acting classes, on-camera audition classes, take her to auditions, get her her child work permit, do all that. All, the, now, all the things. Do all the things that you do with kid actors. Mm-hmm. And then she, we did that for about five years. And she was a booker. Okay. Her agent was uh, Lynn Eriks at Howard Talent West. And then her other agent was at, uh, was Cindy, Cindy Kazarian at uh, KMR. It was not called KMR then. It was called K, KR. Kazarian Rustins, I don't remember. KSR, KSR. And um, she booked everything on site. Like she, you saw her and she booked. That's just how it was. So she just booked and booked and booked and booked. And then she said one day, I don't want to do entertainment. I don't want to be a model. I don't want to be an actor. I don't want to do that. Well, when your child says that, you go, okay, well, what do you want to do? She right. said, I want to ride horses. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ride horses. We ride the horses then, boo. I'm allergic to horses. So you're going to have to do that with your father because <laughs> I can't be there for any of that. So he bought her a horse and then they did all that riding competition and I couldn't attend any of them. So literally I was like, okay, family, bye. What am I going to do? Well, I really enjoyed managing that little girl. I was like, you know what? Let's keep going. I'm going to manage more kids. I like this. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into it. I started managing biracial children like me, of course. Yes, I love it. Who needed some work. I wanted to be my own best advocate. She said. Okay. So all these little biracial children were like, oh, my own little projects. I got all these little biracial children. Then I started with black children. I got Asian children, little Hispanic children. Uh, I had maybe two or three white kids, but I was really interested in, in helping people of color. That That's kind of interesting to me as a manager. Yeah. The white people have always had the advantage, you know, go find someone else. I'm interested in helping all these people of color. So I got them all agents. I got them all working. I educated all their parents and I loved managing. But what I discovered, Christine, is that 99% of the people out there are not represented and they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. And you learn that because they submit to your management company and they ask for representation. And it's like, you don't, you see see what's coming. You see what's coming into your mailbox. Oh, what was coming into my mailbox was, was horrifying. Yeah. And I'm not somebody who can watch a burning building, you know, without running in and helping whoever's in there or any such thing. And what I, what I discovered is that parents are like burning buildings and yeah. and they're spending money to get their kids discovered at yeah. all of these horrible places. Getting scammed left and right. Because, and they want, because they want the best for their kids. They do they want the they, best. They think they're doing the right thing. They think that they're helping. They don't they don't know. And this this whole my whole my whole purpose for, for living, you know, has always been to help people discover what's the gift that they have and then live it. Yeah. And if that means you got to get rid of limiting beliefs, then that's what you got to do. If you got to get rid of self-sabotage, that's what you got to do. You got to get rid of anything and everything that stands between where you're at and who you're really meant to be. Yeah. So I'm dedicated to doing that. While I was watching all of these parents as a manager, I got invited to a ton of events to watch for kids, look, see who you're going to sign, see who's talented. But 90% of them don't even belong there yet. Mm-hmm. They're terrible. They can't act. They can't speak up. They can't look up. They're reading the copy. You know, it's like, yeah. and I and I, I was so appalled. I finally, some guy behind me said, um, I can't believe I paid so much friggin' money for this. And I thought, well, how much sir, did you pay? He said $7,000. Woo! I said, well, for, for what? He oh, said, per child, per child, Woo. three Get children getting over. Oh my gosh. Three children. And I, they all sucked. No offense. They were terrible. They were too young. They didn't belong there. They had no training whatsoever. They were too shy. They couldn't speak up in front of anyone and they were not getting representation. And I could have told them that in a conversation. Right. I did not need to speak spend $21,000 to sit in a room of agents and managers. Ooh, I would have told him that the minute he walked in the door, I would have said, your children are not ready. Go into the community theater, go to the YMCA and do some theater, the community right. center, the church. They are not ready. 
But instead, they flew to LA, went into a room with 100 agents and managers, couldn't perform for any reason on earth because one of them was crying, the other one was hiding. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have to do something about this because it's clear that all of these agents and managers sitting at this table are supporting this bullshit. Right. And I do not. So I started talking to the agents and managers and I was like, you know, we really shouldn't be going to these things because as long as companies invite you and you say yes, they can keep charging this crazy money to people. Absolutely. And they were like, yeah, but, uh, you know, this is how we network. I said, but at the expense of the artists and the parents and the families, that's mm -hmm. not acceptable. We, we network when we go to those events Managers see other managers. It's fun. Hey, managers see other agents and build relationships because I want my clients signed with your agency. They're mm -hmm. casting directors. We haven't met them yet. So we're networking the whole event and maybe sign one or two people. So I'm saying to all of them, every time you attend one of these events, you are continuing the abuse of parents and children. And I will never attend one of these again. Right. And they keep going. They keep going. So I said, um, all right, well, then uh, I can't take these companies down because they, they're worth millions of dollars and they have millions of dollars of lawyers and you can't get rid of them. We will go around them and educate people directly. Yeah. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to ed educate people directly. If I educate actors directly, they don't have to fall for those scams. Yeah. And it can be a ripple effect. Because and it one, is. one learns, they'll tell the friend and, and it just keeps, yeah, you're absolutely right. There it is. And that's what started this. It's not because I said, hey, I want to go on YouTube and start talking about acting. It's like, no, I don't, I, I want to go on YouTube and tell you what not to do, mm -hmm. which is all of those showcases. And what you should do is get real acting training and then get your actor's access profile together and mm -hmm. get good footage and get good headshots where you're not posing because it's not modeling. Right. And then get work on your own, build your resume, and then go for an agent or manager. Skip the 10 grand to go to IPOP, five grand to go to IMTA, 7,000 for talent development. Skip all that. Do what I'm saying, and mm -hmm. you will be able to work. You know, the thing about it is, and I, I know this because we're connected and we'll talk about this, but in having had a, a, a being a fly on the wall in your community, your Hollywood winter circle, is you're straight, no chaser. And that's actually why one of the things I love about you, because that's how I operate too. I, hmm. I feel like I don't, I don't have time to blow smoke up your butt. I want you, and I, because I care. Yeah. There are, there are too many classes, coaches, courses, schools mm -hmm. that will tell you whatever they need to tell you so that you take the, the next class and the next yeah. class and the next class to keep you lock, locked in. And my whole thing is we need we do need empowerment. We do need education. And shout out to the parents, some of you who are listening or watching, like we see you trying to take your kid to the next level. We see your heart. And I believe, Wendy, what I hear is you're passionate about helping people not make those mistakes again and not get scammed. I mean, that's certainly where I, where I stand. That's definitely it. Because in the yeah. parent, in the child market, that's all, that's what it all is. Yeah. I, and it's what appalls me is that Hollywood just allows that to happen. Like nobody ever stood up and said, no, let's, let's not do that. So I, you know, I created the YouTube channel as a simply just to give information and, and I would get cover letters in the email and I'd say, look, don't do this. Mm -hmm. This cover letter, it don't put anything like this in it. Don't tell me your life story. I don't need to know what you thought when you were three and you wanted to be an actor and your first television. Just tell me where you train and what you've been doing on your own to get work and show me a clip of your acting. Yeah. Show me what you can do. Don't talk. Show me what you can do. And if yeah. you are good, great. Maybe I'll work with you myself. If you're not good, I will send you to coaches that can help you get good. And that's what all I was doing with the YouTube channel for years is simply just dispersing as much fact as I possibly could, whether it's about what agents really think, what, what managers really think, what casting directors think, what um, what's expected of actors, how competitive they need to be, how difficult this business is. No bullshit. This is not an overnight success business. Right. Well, so, people want People do come and hope they get a magic pill. That's okay. the thing. And if you're listening and watching this, know that 
don't seek the magic pill. It right. does, it does take work. No one, no two people's stories are the same. Right. So I, I'm not in a place to be like, well, you got to do this many co-stars to get this many guest stars. Oh, no, yeah. I don't believe in that. But do know you got to put some work in. It's a it's a craft, like anything else. You want to be a doctor, you want to be a surgeon, you're not gonna start operating on people tomorrow. You gotta you gotta put what? Some work in. what? Why not? <laughs> You know, Wendy, this 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 whole podcast series and why I invited you specifically, it's it's called Booking Magnet Magic. Of course, mm. if you follow me, if anybody follows me, I call myself I'm the booking magnet. I believe mm-hmm. I'm a big student of the law of attraction. I believe you can attract. Um, I know I'm a magnet. I know I can attract money, experiences, things to my life. If I can do that, I can attract bookings. I can, yeah, I'm booking rooms and roles, right? And I'm so interested in what makes people magnetic. So you, at coming from being an artist yourself, then going into management, you know you saw those kids. Mm-hmm. And even now, when you have clients, there's just some people that just, they don't have to speak. They just there's an aura, there's a light, there's something yes. that's like, oh, you are just drawn to them for you in your own words. What is that? How, what does that look like and feel like to you when you experience that? From in myself or in others? I want to know both. Well, when an, when, a, <laughs> when an actor, an artist, a singer or something is shaped for this business. There's a glow around them. There's a energy, the vivaciousness that comes off of them. There's an enthusiasm and excitement. There's a passion for this. And there's a there's just an, a, an intangible kind of, I think it's called charisma, but it's mm-hmm. confidence. It's a confidence. And I saw it in a little boy yesterday and I, I'm not managing it anymore. I mean, I, I manage one writer, but I'm in literary now. Mm. I'm not managing actors because you can't train them and manage them, you know? So yeah. I, I train them in the HWC, but I only manage writers. And I have two, one writer and then another one I'm signing. But I was sitting at this table yesterday and this little boy, he was like four, four. He said, I, he came in and he goes, hi. I said, oh, that kid, <laughs> that, that, I would assign that kid just like that because he owned himself. Yeah. He was present, connected, not afraid. He was just right, like right there. Hi. I said, hi. And he went like this. <laughs> and I went <laughs> back to him. He was three, going to be four in two days. And I, I, I just thought that was, I said, how old are you? He said, I'm three. And he was so confident. He wasn't looking to his mom to see if she knew the answer or right. is it okay for me to be me? He was just him. And I, I said to her, <laughs> have you ever thought of putting this kid in show business? It's a hard decision because that's a life that, you know, that's, that's the parents have to do everything with kids. Yeah. She yeah. goes, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I said probably a good show. Right. <laughs> Just honestly, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But that kid has it. Yeah. He has it. And it's not trained. It's not taught. It's a it's a vibration. Mm-hmm. You know, he's vibrating at a level that attracts people to him, that mm-hmm. makes him captivating to watch. Yeah. He's not putting it on. He's not being forced to be him. It's just there. Yes. Yeah. And you can t- and it's natural, but with natural talent, you still have to train it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I could have taken that kid if his mother was down <laughs> and if I was still managing. That boy would be on Disney before a year. Because <laughs> I would call Ann Maney, the vice president of, at, at, uh, at uh, uh, Nickelodeon. Yeah. You've got to meet this kid. You've mm-hmm. got to meet, first of all, I would make sure his package was right. He was in Absolutely. some classes. He could speak on camera and work with some scripts, but I would walk him directly in to see her because he's got it. Yeah. Well, some of the things you mentioned were owning mm-hmm. yourself, yeah. being, being connected, confidence, vibrating at a higher level mm-hmm. and being captivating. Right. And I think, so I believe, yeah, some people just are born with it, but then those who are like, I don't know if I'm born and there's a lot of self-doubt and insecurity and all these things. At the core of it, the things that you mentioned that drew you to this child are the things that I know you and I are both always trying to pour into people. Like be, prep. I I always say to my students, preparation breeds confidence. You're not confident because you're not prepared. That's it. That's the truth. You're second guessing yourself. You're fearful. All this stuff, it comes down to lack of, of you, you, you don't feel prepared. 
Yeah, but if you, you don't, you can't get prepared if you don't put in the work. Exactly. So we keep going backwards. <laughs> we keep going back to the core of things. So, and we'll touch on this a little bit more in a second, but for yourself, you know, I yeah. took, I don't know, have you ever heard of the fascination test? No, what's that? I have to send you the link. When we oh, get I'm already off. fascinated by you and myself. We are already fascinating. <laughs> is this lady, and I, and I'm gonna, I don't want to say her name wrong, so I'm, I will send you the link later. Yeah, but yeah. it's this test this woman put together. And it's you take this, you answer some questions, and based on your personality type, mm. it breaks down why people might be fascinated to you. Why people are fascinating to me? No. Why, why, people, why, why, why you why are people? fascinating to us. Oh, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And when I, I took the test because I was I was at a business conference for entrepreneurs oh, cool. and I felt like I knew myself. And the test really just confirmed what I already knew about myself. Like I know my passion lights other people up. Yes. I know that I yes. know that I am light. I operate in that. Yes. I know that my zest and zeal, even if I'm having a tough day, like I know those things. And that's and when I took it, that's what people that's what people have said to me. People yeah. tell me that all the time. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, yeah, I know I'm packed. I know my passion is. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. So what are the things, what makes Wendy fascinating? Why, why are people drawn to you in your opinion? Thanks friggin' awesome. I mean, it's just, <laughs> because I am a light as, as you are. And now yeah. I, I, you know, light sees light. So yeah. I've always walked into the room and been the light that comes yeah. in the room, the, the charisma, the energy, the vibrant, the energy, it's energy. Really. Some people have a lot of energy and some people don't have a lot of energy. Um, I think Tony Robbins helps pump up people's energy because yeah. it might be in there, but it's dormant. You know, they have to mm -hmm. learn to to vitalize that energy and to live in an energetic state. And he believes that you need to get your body moving in order to get that energy going, you know, but I just think some people are born with a higher level of energy. And mm -hmm. I've always had a tremendous level of energy, uh, vibrancy, charisma, and I'm also extremely open. Yeah, you I, are. My You're brother very, used to say, yeah. Wendy, think before you say or do. <laughs> Could you not share so much personal information? <laughs> no, I don't have any reason to have a filter unless I'm trying to be kind. Yeah, yeah. That's other, and other than that, no, I'm an open book. I'm going to say what I think and feel and, uh, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm going to try to help you see what I see. Yeah. And I will start to cry, but literally when I see people, I see something so special. I see, I see just beauty. I see. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I just see like, their hearts and I see magnificence and I see just pure God. You know, I just see Absolutely. the pure beauty of the human being. And then they open their mouth or you can see it in their energy and you can see all the reasons they're blocking their own greatness. Yeah. And, and yeah. It, it could be from bad parenting. It could be from bad experiences. It could, it could be from being like my former assistant, her mother, your stepmother used to tell her she's a piece of shit and she's not worth anything and she'll never be worth anything. And she heard that every day of her life. So when you, when you grow up with people trying to harm you and put you down and tear you down, then to find your light, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. That's tough, but it's there still, <laughs> you know? And my idea, my purpose that God is using me for is to clear away the wreckage of, the, of what's in front of people, what's blocking them from their own magnificence. Yeah. So that they can step into their power and be what they've been created to be. Yeah. And I, and my hope is that I can help as many people come into that power before they die or before I do. 
Yeah. I love that. We are so, mm-hmm. we are sisters from another mister, yeah. Wendy, because that is, I be ugly. I'm ugly. I ugly cry on my Q&A <laughs> calls. We had a Q&A call because book my, my course is Book More TV and we, yeah. every month, we, I, I start off every session with celebrations. I like three hands. I need three hands right now before we go into these questions. <laughs> celebrate. Yes. I, like, I finally booked. Last month they were on the call about to quit, about to throw in the towel. We poured into them next month. It happened um, last week. And then, then they come back, Christine, I booked for the first time ever. I, and I I just had to turn the camera off because I start ugly crying <laughs> and saying hallelujah up in here. But that's and why I send people to you because I know that they might be stuck for years and if they don't unlock the key to why they're stuck and how to tell a better story and how to book the job, they're never going to book the job. Yeah. You yeah, know? I agree. And I, what I'm hearing today really for the first time and getting to have this intimate talk with you is, and why I say we're really connected is, yes, I'm going to teach you about ring lights and beats and, 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 and I'm going to teach you all that. Yeah. Right. But I am also going to tap into the, that part of your soul and your heart that you're trying to ignore Ooh. that is blocking you from even stepping fully into your characters. If you don't love yourself, how can you truly love your craft? How can you truly step oh. into these people and tell their story? Mm. And the and because if not, if you're not fulfilling your needs and if you're not clear on what you are, what you are doing for yourself and if you haven't worked through your own stuff, yeah, how are you going to show up for this character? Yeah. And, and that's the conversation that I found mm. similarly to you when you years ago when you started actually coaching actors. I felt like that's the conversation, even for me as an artist, that mm-hmm. was not ever being had with me mm-hmm. about the core and the soul of the artist. And, and, and mm-hmm. because of, again, like if we don't tap into the deep need of, for ourselves, that's where we drown it in alcohol, drugs, and mm-hmm. we're searching for the booking. No, this booking is not going to complete you. Right. Yeah. It is not because it's a deeper need there because trust me, when you get to that book, the next one, and when, when will you feel like you've made it? When will you, when will you start to feel complete? Like it, That's deep because people think, well, when I'm a star, no, there's a lot of stars who are killing themselves or who are miserable, you know? Well, when I have that house in Beverly Hills, no, that's not the, I like it when people like Jim Carrey say, when you talk to someone who has it all, and they tell you that that's not the answer. It's because they've had it all and that's not the answer. It's deeper. It's a, and I feel like there's a hole in people that's a God hole. Yeah. A, it's the only place that can be filled with this God. And, and I don't mean religion. I yeah. mean, a, the deep divine connection to the divine inside yourself. And I, I think that there's two things that, I, that are really important to me. One is that People embrace themselves for everything, the, the, what they call good, bad, whatever. But all of who you are is stuff you could pour into your acting work, of course. Mm-hmm. But it's also all of that is not, there's not supposed to be perfection. People are not perfect. You, no. Every time you make mistakes, you can either use it to learn and grow, or you can use it to beat yourself up and stay stuck. Mm-hmm. I choose to learn to grow at all times to always every day be a better version of myself every day than I was yesterday not just that but a better version tonight than I was this morning you know and better in every conversation than I was in the last just always being the being what I'm meant to be flowering into right yeah and I think people make a big mistake they make mistakes and then they stop they quit because they made a mistake or they quit because they fail or they quit because they're too tall, too short, too fat, too white, too black, not tall enough too not this. Not, not. Why wouldn't you bring up your flawed magnificence that you that's what you'll always be. You will always have flaws. Mm-hmm. There's never going to be a day that you don't have flaws you because know, we're not perfect. We're human. Right. So embrace the imperfections as part of what's amazing about you. And if you have things about you that you want to work on, work on them. Yeah. You want to improve things, improve them, but don't hold yourself back from living your life because you're flawed. Yeah. Cause every, like you said, everybody is, we all have our things. And I would tell people, you don't covet other people's lives because it, the peace that you want, you can't just have that. You got to take it all. 
Ooh, that's so good. Me <laughs> talk, it's always so profound. You gotta take it all. I mean, we see it all the time. And I'm like, I'm always reminded, like, mm -hmm. this is my journey. This is my path. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, for the actor listening right now and is hearing about people who have it and they're hearing these tips, mm -hmm. what would you say is a tangible, is a tangible first step in Maybe there, maybe someone is listening or watching right now and they just like, look, I don't have the confidence. I don't, that light, that vibrancy you say you have, I don't think I have that. I don't think it comes off. When I walk in a room, I don't think that's what's coming off me. I get that. But you know, even with that vibrancy or not vibrancy, you still either have confidence or you don't. And like I said before, I was scared to death of singing in front of anyone. I couldn't public speak. I mean, they say that public speaking is the higher, is a bigger fear for people than the fear of death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, if somebody was going to ask me to public, like I'm a public speaker. That's what I do for, I love it. I love it. But when I was, when I was a teenager, there's no way that I had the courage, the confidence or the ability to do that at the time. So I, I know that you can overcome fear. You can develop confidence, but it takes experiencing the fear and getting through it to the other side. That's what builds the confidence. So if you're listening and you're like, I'm too scared to try, you know, it's the trying over and over, just doing it anyways. It's called contrary action, right? It's it's when you you are scared of something, but you do it anyways. I call place, I call it play scared. I'm like, I'm gonna play scared. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's I'm exactly scared. I get to acknowledge it, but yeah. I'm gonna play scared. Okay. I love that. <laughs> People say, Christine, like you, you seem fearless. I'm like, uh, 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 uh. I'm fearless. Cause look, I'm very vocal. And even in my book, I talk about my inner critic, my inner voice, whatever you want to call it, ego. I gave her a name. Her name is Veronica. I'm, I was very intentional. I needed to know that wasn't Christine. That's Veronica yes. talking. Yes. And Veronica is just doing her job. She's showing up. I have a new idea. She's going to show up. I have something that a, a new role that seems challenging. She's going to show up. Right. And so I understand she serves her purpose. So it's like uh -huh. feel the fear and do it anyway. The, I think the trick of the mind is thinking the fear will just go be gone one day. And that's a lie. The fear is always coming along for the ride. Mm -hmm. So I feel like just go ahead and make space for him. Like, okay, <laughs> I know you coming. But well, we still here, going. I put a pillow down to make your seat a little more comfortable <laughs> while you sit out of my way. <laughs> I, I, love that. I love that. There's this book, I, which you probably just, you just mentioned the title, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Dr. Susan Jeffers. And oh, it's I haven't heard book. that one. Okay. It's great. It's a book that like, the fear is not going to kill you. The fear is going to stop you if you let it. But doing the thing that you're afraid of, take like, I remember, I remember practicing, I was reading the book, practicing, and it said, look, when you do that thing, uh, it'll be more scary before you do it because that's when you're thinking of all the things that could go wrong and oh my God. Blah, blah. But then when you start to do it, it'll start to feel less scary. And then when you're doing it, it won't feel as scary as when you were thinking about doing it. I was like, mm -hmm. really? Let's try that. So I got up and I wanted to make this phone call. It was a scary phone call. And I, I was calling Virgin Records about something. And I was scared to talk to him. I was like 23. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, but I'm going to practice it. And I, I stood consciously. And how do I feel? I'm sitting on the couch and I'm shit, terrified. Oh my God. I feel like I just, okay. And then I walked towards the phone and I felt like, a little less fear, but still scared. And then I picked up the phone and that's when we had the dial. We were, we were pushing <laughs> dialing. <laughs> dialing. And um, it was less than on the couch. And mm -hmm. then when the, I got on, the person started to answer. I got a little excited. And then when I was talking to them, I was excited, but still a little nervous. But I was not terrified. I was not in fear. And I was like, and then I had the conversation that I'd been wanting to have for like three months that I'd been procrastinating on. And then I hung up and I was like, oh my God, I was so excited I did it. And I was not, I was not at all as afraid doing it as I was sitting thinking about doing it. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And so you have to learn that. You have to do it in order to see that the doing it is not what you're scared of. It's the worry about what might happen to you if you fail, if it doesn't work out, all this stuff that goes through your mind before you do it. Yeah. That's what you're scared of. Yeah, because I was say what happens can is not going to really kill you, you know. <laughs> and yeah, and I, it's like I say, we use our imagination as a lethal weapon instead of a useful tool. We're using it anyway. 
you know, oh my, you just gave me chills. Yeah. You just gave me chills with that one. Yeah, it's real. Say that again. Say that again. We use our imagination as a lethal weapon <sighs> instead of a useful tool because we're using it anyway. Mm, that's the best way I've ever heard it described. Come on, amen. Okay. So that's the thing. And, that, and this, look, when I wrote my book, truth be told, I, and I tell people all the time, I wrote it for me. I wrote it for me to push through and get through. And it's, it, I share it with my peers. Yeah. And that's the thing I know when we're thinking about that audition we have, those 20 pages or those two scenes or that callback, we have a choice. We're going to think about all the ways it can go wrong or right. all the ways it can go right. Mm -hmm. Just like a light switch on or off. And you may catch yourself in the dark. Turn it on. Mm, mm. Okay, I'm back dark again. Turn it back on. Mm. Like, it's just choices every moment. I tell my clients, I say, what, what feels better? Does it feel good to oh. think that? God, yes, that's so true. It just feels better. You can't, I was listening to something yesterday. I, I don't remember who, but you can't be in fear and gratitude at the same time. Mm. So I, when I feel afraid, I, like sometimes I get afraid about a specific thing. And well, my dad dying is something that makes me scared and afraid and upset. <laughs> and he's 86. And I, you know, this, this reminds me of two things. One, I'm going to get a call on it at some point that I don't want to get. So that if I let myself think about that, I'm going to be very upset. So I'm not even going there. But what I do is I go, okay, I have two eyes and I can see and I can hear. And I can breathe and I'm alive and I have great friends and I have a business I love. I have money in the bank. I have a house in Connecticut. I drive a Mercedes. I love and adore. I have a dog that means the world to me. I, my, my mom and dad are both still here. I can't sit in fear if I'm thinking about all the things I love that I have. I, the fact that I can taste, that I can go outside and smell, see the ocean. That fills me with such gratitude. And then if I start thinking about God, I get so overwhelmed by the beauty of this planet and of, of life that I can't be in fear. Yeah. But I, you have to choose, like you said, choices every day. I choose to step out of the fear and into the light as quickly as I can. Yeah. Because it so doesn't good. feel good. Like you said, it doesn't feel good to sit over in pain. I don't want to be in pain. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, I don't, when my husband left a couple, my husband left two years ago, he decided to like walk out of our 15 year marriage. And I said, and without a warning, without a, without a warning, he was just like, hi. I said, good morning. He's like, I'm leaving. I'm like, you're leaving what? I'm leaving you, me from, for how long? <laughs> like <Wow>. permanently. <laughs> okay. And then he was gone. And I was like, um, I'm choosing to get over this as quickly as possible. I will not allow this to interfere with the magnificent joy I feel for being alive. So yeah. I am choosing to heal and forgive him, period, right. because I'm not allowing this to interrupt my life. I'm, I'm a happy person. I'm staying happy. Yeah. It didn't mean I didn't cry. Doesn't mean it wasn't painful, but I kept choosing joy and what makes me happy and focusing on helping others and forgiving him so that I could move through that like, yeah. And I still see people in my divorce group thinking, screw him, you know, next to, I'm like, it's been two years. Why are you still angry at him? Yeah. Because yeah. people choose mm -hmm. every day how they're going to live their life, either enjoy it and live it to the fullest or be a victim of it and be miserable. Yeah. Oh, that's so powerful. Don't waste. And like you said before, don't waste time. I think life is, uh, it's. Yeah. What a gift, what a gift it is. I, I don't see any reason to waste your talent, your time. Uh, don't be defined by what other people have said you are or are you not. I, I believe in a sentence called, I am independent of the good or bad opinions of others. Mm. Like, I'm completely independent of good ones or bad ones. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks about me. It's none of my business. Yeah. My focus is on my purpose living fully as I live, helping as many people as I can, and then going wherever we go. Yeah. At the end of the day, you can't control what people think anyway. We sitting here having a conversation and someone somewhere is judging us or not liking us. That's oh, well, I'm sorry for you. You're missing out on two really great girls. <laughs>
<laughs> like that is out of my control. You know, we're getting ready to wrap, but you know, one thing I also love about you, and again, we're going to put all of Wendy's show notes, when all of Wendy's links in the show notes, but with Ho- Hollywood Winter Circle, um, you are a very big advocate of making your own way and, oh, yeah. and not, uh, as I like to call it, be on the wait and hope plan. Ooh, <laughs> that used to be me back in the day. Like I'm so talented, somebody's going to discover me. One day, I'm gonna write these things down. The way and hope plan. <laughs> you like that? Oh, it's a terrible place to be. Right. That's not a plan, boo. That's not. That's not a good plan. Listen, I talk to new actors all the time, and they're on the wait and hope plan. I'm like, listen, you need to get a real plan. Okay. First of all, you're in business. Well, I don't know. I mean, I thought I was just acting. No, acting business. It's show business. It's a business. Business business. Okay. And if you've never taken business classes and marketing classes, you don't know anything about business. You're going to have a problem in this business. <laughs> you might know how to act, but if you, there's a lot of people that know how to act. You have to know how to operate this business. So my school, Hollywood Winter Circle Academy is the only business school in the world for actors. There is no other one. It's never been done before. It's, as, it's, it's as inventive as bread was once. <laughs> You know, also TMFA, which is my Facebook group, is a free Facebook group. Nothing like that was ever invented either for oh, actors awesome. to talk to managers without having a guard open the door for you. Mm-hmm. Like, you can post your question 24-7, 365 days, and an agent, manager, casting director, or working actor is going to answer your question. They sure will. That's never been hurt. You're part of the group. That's never been hurt, done before. Mm -hmm. HWC has never been done before and it's a comprehensive thing like you said when you teach when you come to HWC yes we're going to work on your package your headshots your acting clips your online profiles helping you get an agent or manager but we're going to work on your heart and your confidence and connecting to your highest self and we're going to help you with manifesting and and creating your vision board and getting clear about who you are and what you want. And two things that I am very, very committed to teaching, like I said, one is not beating yourself up over mistakes. I always say, put the bat down, don't do it. You're harming yourself, it doesn't help. Better to have a positive thought than a negative. The other thing is, I don't believe in broke actors. Me either. Mm -mm. either. I used to keep two jobs, two, three jobs. Had to. Yeah, I don't believe in broke actors. I don't believe in, I can't afford acting classes. I don't believe in any of that shit. I believe that there is plenty of money in the world. And if you're resourceful and inventive, you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. If you have to sell things, make things, distribute things, be an affiliate, get two jobs, uh, invest in real estate, uh, learn, build an online course, uh, teach golf. I don't care what you have to do. There are, you know, if you don't know how to finance your life, it's because you don't know about money. So in addition to studying acting, in addition to studying booking, because you have to know how to book the job. It's not enough just to act. You have to know how to book the audition. So in my opinion, actors need acting training, booking training, financial training. They have to know how to generate money so that they don't live paycheck to paycheck or it's either eating or taking an acting class yeah and also you can't even pour as one of one of my coaches used to say oh. how are you going to be the light when you worried about the light bill oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. how, so how are you going to tap how are you going to be a fully how you how you can't even show up to your craft as full as you want to because oh. of the stressors from life yes you know <laughs> I'm glad I'm making you laugh today, Wendy. <laughs> That's such a good one, though. <laughs> How are you going to show up and be the light if you weren't about your light? <laughs> it's real. <laughs> it's real, but that it's it's all of those pieces. You know, so if you're yeah. watching and listen, or listening to this, and yes, your talent is necessary. Your talent mm-hmm. is important. However, this is show business. Mm-hmm. And there are many more pieces to the puzzle. And what I usually hear, I tell people, you don't even know what you don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as long as you stay open and you stay coachable and accept that you don't know what you don't know and stay open to learning from pe- learn from people who are doing what you want to do. 
mm-hmm. or have done what you have done or you or have done what you want to do. Yes. Yes. That's important too. That's they critical. Have- if you go on like if you go online and go into some Facebook groups and stuff and I look at actors who have never booked TV talking about how to book TV, I'm like, oh, I feel like William <laughs> Jefferson. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, I'm like, you don't need me. I don't know what he said. It was so funny. But it's like, why are you learning how to be? Yeah. If I want to learn how to be a doctor, I'm going to learn from doctors. Right. And it's the same thing when you wanted to be a baker. You go and do an apprenticeship with a baker, a right. cobblestone maker. <laughs> you you yeah. don't just come to Hollywood and say, I'm going to stand on a corner and I hope someone discovers me. Yeah. Well, right. you stand with all the thousands of other pretty people who want to be discovered too. Mm-hmm. And in 10 years, nothing's happened. Yeah. How do you know that? I've been here for 30 years in LA. I've seen people who have gotten nowhere. And yeah. that's because they have no plan. They don't train. They don't train. Listen, there's a big difference between acting classes and audition training. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I'm not, I'm speaking to the choir when I talk to you about this, but this is something actors don't understand. You might understand Stanislavski. You might understand uh, Meisner or Alexander Technique, but that doesn't mean you know how to audition in the room. When you are, and you know this as a manager, because as a manager, you only earn money when your client books a job. Right. So if they're not booking the job, there's no money to pay the light bill or any other bill. There's no money. So the only way that a manager or agent is successful is if the actor books the job. So as a manager for all those years, I learned send my actors to people who specialize in booking. Mm -hmm. That's what I need from my clients to book. So I need to send them to you, which I've sent people to you for years. I send them, I send them to people that are going to teach them how to break down the script in a way that tells the story, the most like, powerfully, visually, transitions, everything is sharp and the choices are strong. Then they are a contender in the room. Without that, they are average and they are unlikely to work. Auditioning is an art form all of its own. And now at the time of this recording, post pandemic or in the middle of self tape, like you have to, you have to learn, I tell you have to learn how to make your mini short films from from your house. Mm -hmm. Bring me into the world immediately. And as someone who's seen a lot of tapes, oh. there's still plenty of people who don't know what they're doing. And, oh, yeah. and at the end of the day, the, the key is connect to coaches mm-hmm. who, as I like to say, have receipts. Okay. <laughs> receipts. I want to see your receipts. Exactly. What have you, have you, are you doing the thing beyond theory? I want to see your receipts. And I think mm-hmm. that's fair. Um, that is fair. That is fair. It is very fair. So we're going to, one last question before we go. This has been so juicy. I know y'all are loving it. <laughs> no. oh, you I know what's it. been the best? I get to look at you for like an hour. What oh. that's been like amazing. Cause you're literally one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. So baby. gorgeous and inside and out. I mean, thank stunning you. human. Thank you. Like attracts like. That's yes. what I say. Like attracts like. Yes. We've shared a lot. And I know this will be episodes you all have to rewind and play again because there's so many nuggets here. And when you connect to Wendy and her Facebook group and on Instagram and in her in her Hollywood Winter Circle course academy, um, do yourself that favor, especially if you're new to the industry. Yeah. And you're, you know, maybe you're coming from a nine to five and you're secretly trying to, you know, start this second part of your life over. Like it's worth looking into. Trust me. I'm, I'm a guest teacher in there sometimes. And I love to come to your community because Thank you. You have a, that your community is hungry. They want knowledge. They really do. And listen, agents and managers prefer to work with our actors. Sometimes like one agent called me the other day and she said, I got a submission from an actor and I knew it was yours. I said, why? She goes, because her headshots matched her videos. Everything was in order. Her package was too good not to have come from you. And I said, you're darn right. Because they do not leave my presence unless their package is good, right? I'm also coming out with two new courses. One is called How to Get an Agent Without a Demo Reel. That's huge. It's huge because you don't need a demo reel. You need acting clips. (laughs) You need individual acting clips that match your most castable types mm-hmm. we don't need a whole reel anymore a manager right. agent can look especially at let me be real especially when the reel is garbage <laughs> the word for what it is garbage, garbage. Quality, quality over quantity i just <laughs> and 
second yeah. course is called how to get a talent. No, how seven easy steps to getting a commercial agent. Because, and these are going to be real cheap, like 47 yeah. bucks. It's like cheap. Yeah. And the, the content, I was going over it this morning with our editors. It's insane the amount of content that I give because I always over deliver. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, if you can't walk away from that course by getting, and getting an agent or manager, it's like, it's yeah. so easy. Just do the steps. Just, just, do, the work, the steps. just do the steps. Right. Do this stuff. And, and that's such a group. That's going to be so helpful because I always tell people, look, commercial agents are the easier mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. Like when you have, when you're new, especially, yeah, theatrical agents going to, you know, unless you just fit a very specific look and, and need for them, you're going to have to show and prove a bit. Yes. Yes. And, and commercials see, are a great way to start and, <laughs> and get that coin. And yeah. But you also need to show your receipts. Like, show me that you know how to book something. Right. And let me see you on camera. Let see me you see on camera. You on camera. The, Ooh, commercial I love that. Course, the commercial course is so, so simple. If you know what needs to be on the casting network's profile and you know what kind of headshots and you know what kind of clips and you know how to write the cover letter, all you have to do is put that together and send it to them. And mm-hmm. you are a no brainer. And, and you can get a commercial agent like, you know, so that, that's what I'm excited about. They'll be able to see how quickly that happens for them. And then they'll come over to HWC and get the rest of the training. I love you. You got to, you know, grad levels to these bevels. You got to graduate. Some I people, love it. Some people jump right into HWC and they, they go, I don't know what I was waiting for. And well, you, people, you cover everything and, and they have access to so much and all the guest speakers and the teachers. And, hours of training a week for, yeah. for a year. I always tell people like, if you're not getting what you need, you're not trying to get it because it's there did you log in did you read the email <laughs> and you know we can look to see if you logged in right <laughs> don't, don't lie this course hasn't been helpful well, it says you did one percent so, <laughs> i guess it wasn't <laughs> don't blame it on us you didn't lo- you didn't log blame in me. don't blame me <laughs> oh my gosh as you can see we could talk all day but we're not make sure you follow wendy and lane right before we go last thing last thing what's that for the actor at home, hmm. maybe they're seasoned. They've been doing this for 15 years, 20 years, and they're just, they just, it's, they've hit a lull. Or the brand new actor coming in feeling clueless. Hmm. And they might be just frustrated. Like, you know, you know, we have these moments where we're like, is this, maybe I should just go back to my day job. Maybe this isn't for me. I haven't, I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm getting a breakthrough. I'm ready to throw in the towel. What do you say to that artist? Wow. Just a piece of encouragement for them. That's a really great question. And actually, inside the Winter Circle um, Friday last week, we had Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, who was on Welcome Back, Cotter with John Travolta years ago. And he's on a series right now. He's in season four. Season five just got picked up. And this is a guy who's been working for 50 years. And one of my HWC actors felt like he hadn't achieved the success he wanted to achieve yet. And he was asking Larry, how do I stay in the game? You know, how do I keep going when I don't feel motivated and I feel like I'm failing and I'm not where I want to be yet? And Larry was talking about when there was a time when a girl or a woman he was dating at some point thought, you know, you made it already. You've already, you know, you had your shot. You you made it big. You know, uh, it's not happening for you. Why don't you quit and get a regular job? And he said, you have to have a thrust called it behind you you have your own thrust and you can't listen to what anyone else is saying or what anyone else is doing you just keep putting yourself forward a hundred percent towards your goal and if you need to take time unwind go relax you have to have a life outside of acting that fills you up that you feel empowered by that reconnects you and you have to always remember why you are doing this and always come back to your why and you will you will go through t- times when things aren't aren't moving forward, but it'll pass. And you will go times through times when you don't think you're good enough, or maybe this isn't meant for you, and all. But it'll pass. You don't give in to that. You just acknowledge that you feel it, and then you keep moving forward with your thrust. Mm-hmm. And it has to come from within you, and you have to build that thrust yourself because no one else is going to do it. Yeah. But I I feel the same exact way. You know, you have to. When I run my business, there are days when I'm feeling overwhelmed by it. Other days where it's so friggin' awesome and easy. I am committed to the end result. Mm. And I will stop at nothing until I achieve what my goal is. I love that. 
I am committed to the end result. Absolutely. And the end result for me is that the knowledge about this business is so prevalent that it, how it works is so prevalent that people are not passing around the wrong information anymore. That yeah. agents and managers are being delivered such great actors that everybody is going to start taking business classes for being an actor. I won't be the only school that teaches it. Someday there'll be other ones. Mm -hmm. But as long as people are teaching actors the business side, then many more people have the chance to succeed. So I'm trying to make teaching the business of acting mainstream. That's yeah. important to me. So I support anyone who's teaching it. You know, and I want people to take my course, but I want people to take any course that yeah. teaches them the business. So that's my end goal. And at the end of the day, when people are like, oh, business class? Oh yeah, I, I take acting business class. That's not even a question. Right. <laughs> then I've done my job. And then I'll go probably work in an orphanage in Peru or something. Come on. And help them your children. Yeah. Oh, Wendy, thank you for thank your you. light. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for sharing yourself with me and with everyone watching and listening. This, oh, you gotta just go ahead and hit, go ahead and rewind. You're gonna have to rewind this <laughs> down. Like this is just, it was so juicy. I can't wait to listen back to this. Make sure you follow Wendy. Make sure you follow and 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 connect with Wendy and learn more about Hollywood Winter Circle Academy, the T the T M F T M F A group oh. on Facebook. Uh, huge group. I mean, if you look wanted to network and connect, make sure you do that. And of course, come over to the Hollywood Bond Actors Facebook community and keep listening to this amazing podcast for more encouragement. Remember that you have a gift that the world needs to see. So don't rob us and don't rob yourself of sharing that gift. We'll see Ooh. you. Bye.